So we've heard about eating according to our blood types and eating for certain health requirements. But have you ever eaten according to your zodiac sign? Penny Thornton joins us in the kitchen as we find out more about this new diet while preparing a mouth-watering chorizo and white bean soup. Welcome to the show. It's wonderful to be here. <laughs> now you're going to have to explain this one to me because I've literally tried every diet on the planet, but I've never tried eating for my zodiac sign before. How does it work? Well. It we haven't got half an hour here for me to give you the theory, <laughs> but it, everything, uh, every piece of produce, plant, animal, yeah. belongs to a certain sun sign or a certain planet. So, yeah. And this goes back thousands of years. So I've compiled this whole list of fruits and produce that goes with each of the sign. But yeah. just very quickly, I mean, it should be something that you want, that you feel um, that you like very much. Your body should be telling you, I really love heat. Yeah. I really love chili, and I know that's in your case, <laughs> uh, because both of us are Aries here. Yes, so yes. heat is important to us, both in terms of the sunshine, but also in terms of the things love that looks. we like to eat. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, I'm so pleased to have you here. How do we get started with this amazing dish? Well, preferably put a pan on the stove. That's yeah. always a good start. Yeah. And um, I've already put the chorizo in there. The yes. chorizo is just chopped. And you're going to put that in the oil so that the oils from the chorizo are release so you've got a okay. nice rich red paprika flavored Ooh, base. and the smell from the chorizo is amazing okay so i'm just going to add here some of the vegetables uh, we've got onions uh, we've got uh, fennel all chopped and we've got a little carrot as well lovely and then what i do here is um obviously i want to coat everything with the oil yeah um Delicious. And I also put a little salt in at this time because that needs to release it, the water from the onions. Yeah. Um, and then I do something that not a lot of people would do, but that is to add some butter. No, trust me, in this kitchen, that's our number one favorite <laughs> ingredient. I, I am the butter queen. Uh, yeah, you know, I what, love butter. Whatever you can do to, you know, make this, um, to make something richer and more flavorful, just add butter. Just exactly. don't even think about it, just add butter. Yeah, and then so that's just going to cook for a That's going while. to cook for about 10 minutes. You want to really cook it down so you've got a really, really good mulch, yeah. you know, in there. So, I mean, we can proceed, we can do television cooking Well, here. I want to ask you a few questions first, because, I mean, now that you are my favorite astrologer, it's also because you've had other star clients. One in particular was the late Princess Diana. Indeed, How yes. did that relationship come about? Well, it, it came about really because um, I, I was actually friends with the Duchess of York and yeah. Prince Andrew, so it wasn't very long before you know, they both said that Diana would really love to have her chart done. So yeah. that's how it came about. But when it actually did happen, it was really a great surprise because I had sort of forgotten that, that, that Diana was interested in astrology. Yeah. And the phone rang one morning while I was uh, working. And I picked up the phone, I said, hello. And this voice said, oh, hello, it's the Princess of Wales. So she just phoned you directly. She phoned me direct. I had no kind of heads up that yeah. this was going to happen. So it was a great surprise. Yeah. But we had a lot in common. We both loved ballet and uh, we had sons exactly the same age, little boys as they were then. Yeah. And I explained to her that I couldn't actually see her because I was finishing a book and I had a deadline. And she said, oh, well, no, no worries. <laughs> that's probably the first time she's ever heard that. Sorry, princess, but I'm busy writing I'm my book. I'm busy right now. So. <laughs> and so we continued to talk for a while. And then just as we were about to say goodbye, she said to me, well, I am looking forward to seeing you. Uh, she said, I, I just really need to know if there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And when wow. I heard that, I thought, oh, my goodness, this is serious this isn't someone who just wants to enjoy themselves knowing about themselves this yeah. is someone with a problem and uh, and I was there a few days later at Kensington Palace That's what was it like meeting her for the first time well a little awe-inspiring um, yeah. I mean she was such um, I mean she, she is as she was if you see what I mean however we're used to seeing her on footage yeah um, she is that warm she is that she has that aura, that charisma that sort yeah. of goes ahead of her. So. Amazing. And does she eat according to her zodiac? Because let's have a look and see how this is going. It's going, but we can move on. Yeah, what's our next step? The next step is to um, add a little sherry vinegar, very important. Okay. And I would recommend sherry vinegar, not any other, because remember, this is a vaguely Spanish dish because yes. we're using chorizo. Um, and that needs to really absorb, you need to let that 
get in there and then when all the smells coming from here are it gets incredible better. this is it gets such better. a fragrant dish um then i'm going to add some of the tomato paste yeah. do you want me to mix it for you yeah that would be great i'm a really good sous chef <laughs> <laughs> now that really needs to work its way into yeah. the mulch because okay. um people think you know you, you can add tomato paste and then just add everything else but it needs to cook in you need to really really get the flavor in there yeah otherwise every mouthful tastes different or what? yeah um well it just is more intense okay. and i think one of the greatest things that i think especially with soups and casseroles things like that that we like to eat at this time um the layers that you put in and the longer you leave each layer to build yeah eventually the greater taste you're going to have so these things shouldn't be rushed don't you find that nowadays people just rush everything in the kitchen where actually when you take time doing something and actually just calm yourself a little bit that you appreciate it more uh, absolutely and I mean I learned the hard way because I'm an Aries so I do everything <laughs> in double quick time yeah. and I never bothered to look at a whole recipe I would just open the book start the recipe and then of course halfway through you realize something has to marinate for two hours yeah so you're kind of stuck so um, reading your recipe through very carefully taking your time with it they're the secrets of actually ending up with a decent kind of dish how did you learn to cook um, well my mother was a great great cook yeah. and I think you you learn from your kind of mother's knee. But what also happened to me many years ago, funnily enough, when I published the book, or the book about Diana was published, the Food Network in America approached me and said, would I do some uh, special astrology food spots? And yeah. that's how it began. Uh, so I was working with the kitchen to create recipes according to the planetary um angles of the Your day so, yeah so <laughs> i always thought that's this is a great idea for a book and at some point i'm going to do this so. that is wonderful okay so, now um, what are oh, we adding well actually what we need to do first is to take the tomatoes in okay um, whole peeled uh these are um tinned and i like to use the cherry tomatoes because yeah. they're a lot sweeter and often I will mulch them yeah. before they go in, but I wouldn't recommend this because we'll have tomato all over us. Well, I love tomatoes, <laughs> and apparently the more, to your, the more to your tomatoes you eat, the better it is for your skin. Apparently tomatoes are really, really good for your skin. In fact, I heard, and I mean, don't quote me on this, you maybe want to Google it before you take my word for I it. I think I know what you're going but to say. But if you have, eat, have a diet high in tomatoes, you won't get sunburned. That, well, that's that very true? interesting. But <laughs> as well, far I'm going to Google that in the ad break. <laughs> you can actually put tomatoes on your face. I mean, they do in parts of Italy. They maintain their beautiful skin. Tell me how. Because of the tomatoes they have there. They use it as a kind of like a skin. Mask. Like, a, like a mask. Um, <laughs> so. Watch me leave here this afternoon and go and sit at home full of tomatoes. I will not age. I will not age. <laughs> tomatoes on my face all day. So That's I'm going to actually idea. add the stock now. And I mean, this is really very s simple. This yeah. is not a hard dish, but it packs a powerful punch as far as we're thinking about flavor. So yeah. you let that come to the boil. Yeah. And once it does, you put it right down to simmer. And I usually leave just a little bit of a gap there and about 40 minutes just to get together. And what you'll find is that the oil will separate from the liquid. Yes. And that's when you know it's great. That it's done. It's great, yeah. Okay. And finally, before you serve, you add, you pop in your chorizo, your white beans, and finally serve with um, fresh coriander and Amazing. sour cream. Well, we're gonna still do this because I'm enjoying cooking you want to do the, the whole thing. so much. <laughs> well, yeah, well, we'll let this cook for a little while longer if you want. Okay. Now, I want to know what is the effect, if you eat correctly, according to your zodiac, what is the effect on your body? Well, now this is a very interesting question because I only, as I was kind of two or three signs into the book, I decided that I wanted to look at food issues. and. Yeah. My thought was I wanted to talk about babies and toddlers, you know, encouraging them to eat wow. well. So that's how it started out. Yeah. But then as I began my research, I started to find out that certain cell salts are contained in, well, tomatoes, whatever. And those are the cell salts that go with the, with the signs. Okay. So that by eating the foods rich in those cell salts that go with your sign, you're almost preventing certain conditions that your sign is prone to so 
Wow. It's like a from a disease kind of thing or from a behavior kind of thing. Like will it affect your behavior? Will it make you happier? Or will it affect like if you if you're like prone to, to get sick? or indigestion well, we or all, yeah, IBS well, or whatever it is that people get from eating badly. Well, what we eat, of course, is going to help us to be healthy. So it yeah. is primarily a health thing. But for instance, especially with the Saturn rule signs and you think about Capricorn and Aquarius, who can get a little bit moody and groody, um, <laughs> <laughs> they will probably benefit from some red pepper, things that are red and hot. And that does affect the... Um, levels of uh, exactly. you know in your body and it brings wow. out a positive a positive yeah. element well I'm looking so forward to finding out more about this book we're going to do that in a little while but if you'd like to get this recipe sent directly to your phone simply SMS the keyword start to double three six five zero SMS is a one rand fifty each and no free SMS's apply and we'll send you the ingredients list and a link to this absolutely delicious dish I wish you could smell it now it's so good and of course if you'd like to see more of Penny and learn more about the stars be sure to tune in on Wednesday for more Zodiac cooking